Merry Christmas guys, I just want to start this video off by saying thank you all for helping me reach 20,000 subscribers. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys. Sorry if this video comes off a little rushed or short because I'm trying to get this out before Christmas, so I hope you enjoy everything wrong with Yu-Gi-Oh! the movie Pyramid of Light. So the format is going to be slightly different for this video considering that I only have a 90 minute film to work with. By comparison, each episode is usually about 10 hours worth of anime that I watch. So I'm going to style this one somewhat similar to a review. This movie came out August 13th, 2004, during the height of Yu-Gi-Oh's popularity in the West. This movie was actually screened in theaters where I went and watched it with my group of friends for a friend's birthday party. When re-watching this movie for this video, I definitely felt a lot of nostalgia for it. So I'm going to come out now and say I may come off a little biased for this video and be a little more lenient for the film. You can tell that they had a much bigger budget when making this film. The quality of the animation and color detail went up. Not a lot of scenes where it looked like Joey's face was melting or a lot of disproportionate body sizes like Kaiba walking around in his suit. I absolutely love the detail of them adding the English text to all of the cards in this movie. I really wish they could have done this for the TV show itself, but I understand that they did not have the time or the budget for doing that. Probably one of the biggest glaring issues that's outside of this film is that they released this before the end of the Battle City arc. So anyone who saw this movie would have been spoiled at what happened in the end. This is basically the equivalent of Find Out Next Week, Dragon Ball Z in Frieza Defeated. Not that it really matters because the story is so generic and cookie cutter that you probably could have predicted it if you are older than the age of 10. I remember being absolutely terrified of the opening scene from this movie as a child with the creepy chanting and what my 8 year old mind perceived as a graphic image of a dead body. Where the fuck did Yugi get an instruction? man to put the Millennium Puzzle together. How would they have footage of Yugi dueling strings for Sly for the Sky Dragon from Season 2? The only people who actually spectated this duel was Kaiba and Mokuba. They forgot to take the Japanese text off the cards in this shot, but I guess that would be pretty difficult and we're like, ah, fuck it. No one's gonna notice unless some asshole going through this with a fine tooth comb for a YouTube video would actually notice. Give me a break. I bet I could duel circles around this little high school pipsqueak. It's actually pretty cool that they left in the original scoreboard art instead of using the cheaply made four kids looking ones. <sighs> So you can now interact with the holograms and ride them. I thought they didn't add solid mass until arc five. False alarm, this is just a simulation. But if that wasn't a simulation, does that mean Seto would have just fallen to his death after the blue eyes ultimate dragon just died? Another childhood trauma from this movie that I received was I was terrified of the idea of an invisible man walking in through my room in the middle of the night. Got it all. Holy shit, this song's actually pretty good. I'm genuinely surprised that they didn't edit out the wine in this shot and make it water. Did 4Kids really dub this? I don't believe you. So it's clear that Pegasus is pretty much retired from making the card game now that he's lost his Millennium Eye and he, and he just wants to make Koi Ponds or some bullshit, whatever the fuck he mentioned right there. But now that brings to the topic is who's making cards now? Is it Kaiba? Has he just completely taken over? Because the way I see it with his deck destruction virus, he's just gonna make a bunch of bullshit OP cards until he can beat Yugi and then still somehow fucking fail at the end of the day. How many hidden cards does Pegasus actually have? First he had the god cards, and then he had the spirit monsters that Noah used in season 3, and now they have these? Next you're gonna tell me there's even more secret cards that he's been hiding from us this whole time. Hey, try and sneak you got around back while we hold them off. Good idea, Joey. Just announce the plans while they're all right in front of you. It's definitely not like they're gonna hear it. Holy shit, they didn't edit out the needle from Injection Fairy Lily either? Pegasus only started with four cards in his hand, even though you're supposed to start with five. And then once it changes angle, it shows that he has five cards in his hand and draws his sixth. The Dark Magician Girl in this shot is supposed to be Toon Dark Magician Girl, but they placed in the wrong card. Never shut up. I know what it means. At least they're cutting down on explaining every single card they use, but I guess that's because they're on a time constraint because they're in a 90 minute film. But here's to hoping they're becoming a little bit self-aware at how repetitive it is. While the improved art style definitely helps the detail of the main characters, it certainly brings out how shitty the side characters look and all the characters in the background. Like look at these kids, they look like their faces are fucking melted. Their designs are somewhat reminiscent of like a Duel Masters reject design. They also kind of remind me of when an anime has the meta narrative of a main character watching an anime so they purposely draw whatever they're watching on TV shittier to have the presentation of look it's a cartoon on TV. Of course with having 
having the text on the cards means they have a lot more things to be careful that they don't fuck up. Like how you can see right here, Queen's Knight and King's Knight's text is backwards on the cards. Bloodlust slash! He says to use a slash attack, but he stabs him. When Pet in the Dark Clown is destroyed, Kaiba is able to activate the deck destruction virus. But the card requires you to destroy a fiend type monster with 500 or less attack. The only problem here is Pet in the Clown is a spellcaster. When you went to see this movie in theaters, you received a card pack. Of course, I got fucking Wada Pond, and my friend's brother got Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. I really wish I pulled that chick, considering it's like worth $500 right now. Actually, after fact checking post recording, I found out that it is the retro pack Shining Blue Eyes Dragon, not the movie pack one. When counting up the dragons in the graveyard for Blue Eyes Shining Dragon's effect, they forgot to include Paladin of White Dragon. Not sure they intentionally left this out or just forgot it, because if they did, then Blue Eyes Shining Dragon would have killed Yugi with his attack this turn. Kind of reluctant to add this into the video, but I'm glad the movie showed enough restraint to not go after the low hanging fruit joke that was Grandpa looking up Taya's skirt. I know the show had a habit of using him for butt ends of jokes, but it is somewhat refreshing to see that they have enough self restraint. I can't tell you how many times that shows and movies or any other form of media have ruined this tone of a scene by including these unnecessary jokes. Now that I think about it, the art style bump in quality is somewhat reminiscent of the Scooby-Doo movies, particularly Zombie Island, from going from a very flat looking show to a more in-depth looking movie. At least we could be happy that this movie didn't take the Rugrats route, or they made everyone a gray amorphous blob. <laughs> Did Kaiba actually just rip his card? Yeah. What are you doing? This reaches a whole new level of stupid for Tay. Like, why the fuck would you get on the rail of a helicopter? What do you plan on doing? Diving right into the evil eye? What happens when you go smack right into the fucking concrete? It sure was nice of that mummy to wait for Yugi to fail at throwing the dagger. In the dub, Anubis activates the Pyramid of Light around his neck's effect, releasing all the souls trapped within the Pyramid of Light in the Millennium Puzzle, increasing the power of Thinian. But in actuality, it's Thinian's effect that makes him stronger for each monster in the graveyard. For some reason, they changed this in the dub. In the English version of this scene, they put defusion wave motion in Yami's hand, but it's supposed to be double spell. You'd think with the fact that they had the card text, they'd realize that this was an error, especially when he says the card's name a minute later. I activate double spell. A lot of the times they make me think that they have no quality assurance people on their team. And Kaiba spoke of dealing me the perfect defeat. But Kaiba never said dealing the perfect defeat. He only thought it when arguing with Anubis in his head. He wanted a perfect victory. So how would Yami know that he said that? Return from a different dimension only allowed you to return monsters banished from your side of the field. This is how it's stated on the card even in the anime's context, so how would Kaiba even plan to do anything with the god cards? When Anubis activates Inferno Tempest and blows all the cards away, you can see right here that he has two Winged Dragon of Ra's in Yugi's deck. Whoops, forgot to mention the original recording, but the fact that he also has two King's Knight in his deck, and we all know that Yugi doesn't run more than one of each card. How this man managed to win anything with a deck of 41 ofs is beyond me. Anyway, back to the show. Don't worry guys, with the power of friendship and the fact that we made this stupid bullshit plot armor car that could destroy literally anything in the game, we're just gonna deal with this all-powerful, mighty, evil Egyptian god. And we'll never have to worry about him again, because this is non-canon. Overall, I did really enjoy this film, flaws and all. Maybe that's because I have a more nostalgic tie to it reminding me of my childhood. But I can't really excuse how lame and unmemorable Anubis really is. Sure, his voice is cool and the chanting was pretty spooky, but at the end of the day, he He's only just another, I've been waiting for 5,000 years to get my revenge on you, Pharaoh. Like, okay, we get it. This has been done before. Get in line, buddy. You're like the 12th person waiting to get his revenge on the Pharaoh. And ironically enough, he still doesn't even remember any of you at this point. While on the topic of talking about my personal feelings for the show, I thought I'd dispel a little myth about how I feel about it. While I may rail on it and ramble and get very mad at it occasionally, like you could see in Season 3 Part 2, I still do love the show and I love the game, flaws and all. It's just that I... I, wouldn't know, I don't want to say play a character, but I do somewhat play it up for the sake of entertainment. But nonetheless of how I personally feel, I hope you guys do enjoy these videos and continue to enjoy the ones that I'm going to be making in the future. I guess since I did say I was going to format this similar to a review, I guess I should give it a score. Even if I do think that giving a numeric value to one's personal enjoyment is kind of stupid, so I will give it a Z-Man out of 10. Thank you, thank you, I'll be here all night, thank you. 
Thanks for watching guys. If you did enjoy that, I ask that you please subscribe for further videos. I'm really reluctant to have to ask this, but since it seems like YouTube is forcing you, I ask that you please hit the bell to get notifications whenever I do upload. I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support the show. Any amount helps, and considering now that this is my full-time job, I do feel like I have to kind of rep this with all the adpocalypse happening right now and the demonetization left and right. But on the bright side, now that I am full-time YouTube, that means that I can get videos out faster for everybody. So that means more everything wrong with Yu-Gi-Oh! Instead of having to wait one month at a time for a single episode. If you donate at least one dollar to the Patreon, you can join the Discord server and talk to me, and you get a few more behind the scenes stuff along with other goodies. You can also follow me on Twitter where I do also post some more behind the scenes stuff as well on that, and keep your eye out for when I stream on YouTube or Twitch where I edit everything wrong with episodes live, except for this one where I want it to be a surprise for everybody. And until next time guys, have a happy holidays and peace. Save him!